to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. may be seated. To have public and employee comment. Oh, I'm sorry that we need to, it's been so long since we've had anybody here. I like don't know what to do. Ask me. Yes, absolutely. We can hear you. We can hear I you. I know you can hear me. There oh, we there go. we go. Now. <laughs> uh, my name is Dee Strauss. I'm the DECA advisor here at King George High School, and I would like to introduce you to some of our officers, and they're going to share a few things with you tonight. We have Jesse Wang, our co-president co of our chapter, and we have Anthony Means and Alina Puentes, who are our Fox Stocks managers. Jesse? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the King George County School Board and members of our school and community. We represent the King George High School DECA chapter and are proud to deliver the pledge. Oh, never mind. We want to share with you what our DECA chapter has happening for this coming year. Although our events are virtual, we are still very busy. Our officer team has been in place since last May and has met regularly through this summer. This team not only includes our school officers of Natalie Kanoki, Jesse Wing, Vice Presidents of Leadership, Michael Jennifer and Amanda White, Vice President of Career Development, Ellie Vizi, Vice President of Hospitality, Natalie Pelto, Vice Presidents of Marketing, Ryan Andrews, Vice President of Finance, Joseph Staples, and Fox Stocks Managers, Anthony Means and Alina Puentes. We also have Virginia District 19 President, Lauren Wenzel, and Virginia De DECA State Action Team Region 3 Vice President Troy Spillman. So this Sunday, our team will participate in the Virginia DECA Officer Leadership Retreat from noon to 6 p.m. in a virtual setting. Over 300 student DECA officers and advisors from all over Virginia are participating in this retreat. Currently, our chapter is collecting cereal with the Fredericksburg Area Realtors. Chip Taylor is our liaison for the local King George food banks. There are collection boxes in the main office foyer here at King George High School, and this collection will go on for the next four weeks. Next, um, on September 23rd from five to seven, we also have a Chick-fil-A pop-up, and it's at the cafeteria, it's a drive-through pickup dinner, and you can also drop off the cereal boxes there. KG Deca is also on a card or letter writing campaign in conjunction with Mary Washington Hospital and long-term hospice care facilities. These cards and letters will be going to long-term care and hospice patients at the Mary Washington Hospital facilities. We hope to continue this campaign on a monthly basis through the school year. Collection boxes are also in the main office foyer for students to drop off their cards and letters for distribution. This year is very important to our chapter, not only because we have a state officer, but because we have had some very, very generous supporters in our community who are paying for the state and national DECA dues for our student members. So except for the t-shirt, student DECA membership is free. Now we invite you to be a professional member and have provided membership forms to you tonight. Our DECA competitive events will be held. Our district leadership conference is in November and we will be a virtual event and it is also free. State leadership conference will also be held as well as our international career development conference. We are still awaiting word on status of these two events. We are holding a benefit golf tournament on October 31st at Hobbs Hole in Tappahannock to raise money for the Alzheimer's Association. We, are, we also are providing you with registration forms for this event. We look forward to sponsoring families for Thanksgiving and Christmas with King George Social Services, and we continue to look for other ways that we can connect, compete, and provide community service here in King George and beyond. Thank you for your time tonight.
Hi, my name is Alina Fuentes, and I'm one of the Fox Stocks managers for this year. Currently with Fox Stocks, we have made a new Instagram account. It is KG Fox Stocks. Make sure you check it out. And outside on Fox Stocks, we have a QR code, and you can scan it, and you have easy access to our new online store, which Anthony will be telling you more about. Thank you very much for letting us speak today. Good evening, board members, in-house audience, and all of those King George community members listening at home. I'm Anthony Meads. I'm one of your Fox Fox managers for the 2020-21 school year, and we're going to give you some information on how we adapted to our current situation. We definitely miss seeing everyone coming by our store, but don't worry, we are still here to serve. We have launched an online store, which Alina previously mentioned, where everything will be made by the company and will be delivered to your house. So it will be no contact delivery from us and the students, the staff, and all the parents will be safe. You can access the store by going to the King George High School homepage and you can click the banner, which literally says Fox Stocks on it, and I'll take you right to the store. Or you can find it on our Instagram, like Alina mentioned, or you can go right outside Fox Stocks and scan the QR code. We thank you all for your business and we thank you all for your support during this difficult time we hope everyone stays safe. Thank you guys very much. It's, it's nice to have a little change to order around here and see some smiling faces. I guess we can assume they're smiling. <laughs> okay, now I Strauss is. Yeah, I'm sure she is. Okay, now we can move on to uh, the public and employee comment. Currently, we have Miss Yvonne Richard. My name is Yvonne Richard. I live at 8421 Cedar Lane, King George. I'm a STEM teacher at King George Elementary School. On September 2nd, 2020, King George County School underwent a cyber attack with ransomware. We're not the only district that has had such an attack. I know that according to Dr. Benson's email, we're back in business. However, we still have not heard what type of information the hackers had access to during this incident. We have not been informed if they had access to personnel files containing social security numbers or health data that was collected as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. I think that it is critical that staff be informed if our personal data was part of the attack. Additionally, I would like to state publicly that many families are calling for the reopening of school in a full capacity or hybrid plan. I hope that before any reopening is planned that staff at all levels are included in this decision. While providing a high quality education for our students should be a priority, I hope that the board will not do so at the expense of our teachers' health and safety. Providing instruction online takes a great deal longer in the planning side of, than regular face-to-face -face instruction. In addition, if we move to a blended learning format, students will only see their teachers two days a week, and teachers will still need to provide asynchronous instruction for students three days a week. This provides much less time for teacher interaction with students than what, was, what is currently happening. While a hybrid plan may sound good to parents who wish to send their children back to school, it also means that three days a week, their child will not easily be able to ask teachers to provide answers or assistance. It also means that all of the instruction on those days will be pre-recorded videos, which take a long time to create, or will be large amounts of independent work that may require even more parent assistance. I would also like to speak as a parent of a middle school and high school student. Both of my students and both of my children have been spending more time completing schoolwork than ever before. This means that it's more time sitting in front of a computer staring at a screen. I would like the board to consider adopting some policies or guidelines that all grades could implement. For example, no more than 30 to 40 minutes of work to be completed during asynchronous instruction per class. 
If students are meeting with teachers during the one hour of asynchronous time for each block at the middle and high school level, then reduce the amount of work to be completed and it should be good practice. All assignments should have a common deadline and the deadline should not fall on weekends and holidays. All buildings should be clear of what the student expectations are for Wednesdays. Guidelines for the amount of work to be assigned on Wednesdays should not exceed one hour per course. It should not take several hours for students to complete work for each class that they're enrolled in on Wednesdays. Finally, with the lack of consistent internet and the frequent power outages, as many are experiencing, no student should be punished for a missed deadline. I would like to say a huge thank you to Dr. Boyd for hosting his weekly parent and student meetings. I've been able to listen to his parent meetings while planning instruction for my own classes the last several weeks. And I feel like he's done an excellent job of answering parent questions and interacting with students and parents. I wish that the school board and Dr. Benson would consider hosting a similar town hall style meeting for the community. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Richard. Uh, next, Ms. Strauss. I tried to make the type big so I didn't have to put my glasses on, but that didn't work. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the board and members of the community. As I said before, I am Dee Strauss, the marketing teacher and DECA advisor here at King George High School. I want to give a big shout out to our administrative staff here at the high school and all of the teachers helping teachers here. This has been a true challenge for many of us, and there have been so very many people in this building who have stepped up in countless ways to help each other out. The admin team has guided us through this so well, and I'm very proud to be a King George High School Fox. For the start of my 21st year of teaching, I am very, very thankful for the people here and my friends at King George High School. They just deserve so much more than what I think that they're hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have anybody online for public comment? Mr. Vance? Three, okay, thank you. I think you have some people in the audience too that want to speak still. Okay, so they were supposed to sign in. Ms. Rinko, would you have them sign in, please? Mr. Vance, there's somebody in the audience that's going to go ahead and speak. Could you please let me know when those online are ready? So are you going to unmute them to let them know that? Okay, we have one more, I believe. Ma'am, you can go ahead and come up to the podium. We have Miss Natasha Ward. Thank you. Hello, ladies and gentlemen of the board. Thank you for allowing me to come. I have uh, contacted you all, know some of you personally. Uh, Miss Gonzalez, I'd like to thank you for you were the only one that responded to my email. So I do appreciate that. Um, I am a proud parent of two graduates in 2014, 2018, and 2020, hopefully soon. And I like to present an argument with informed information. Most importantly, I, want, I have asked numerous times for the metrics in the plan in opening the school. Um, I think the parents and the members of the community deserve that. And hopefully that's what we're working for and to continue to ask for the metrics that you plan to use when you're establishing opening up this school. Um, I think we can all agree that our online um, opening was less than stellar and hopefully continues to uh, improve. I don't expect, I didn't expect it to be per uh, perfect, but I expected it to be a little bit better than it was. Um, 
Additionally, um, I think I've already expressed my concerns about the health of the children, but I do want to present some data, and this data was updated as of today, as far as um, the metrics of the state. Fortunately, our uh, county has only seen four deaths, which is a 0.02% compared to the population of 26,575, this is 2018 data. Um, I'd like to add that we have had no deaths since April 22nd, um, attributed to the medical community and nurses such as myself that we uh, learned how to care for these people. And I'd also like to add, I know that teachers are working hard. We all work hard. You can imagine how us healthcare workers have worked hard as we continue to face this and care for these patients. Um, also, which I found interesting when I did this, is that in this county, we have four times more likely chance of being raped, murdered, or kidnapped than dying of COVID. Um, everybody's talked about the flu, which I found interesting, and I actually printed this off because I kind of, the numbers are startling, um, and this is from the Department of Health. In the flu in Virginia last year, actually this is 2019-2020 data, so very recent, there were 11,964 cases of flu. There were 4,832 deaths, which is a 24.7% death rate, and that is with a vaccine. So you can imagine um, when you compare the death rate of COVID to the death rate of flu, uh, I think it speaks for itself. Additionally, 50% of flu cases are children. So when we're speaking about um, teachers and people being scared of the children, you're, you should be much more scared, um, educators, of children uh, and the flu, giving you the flu than COVID. Um, pretty much that, that's all. But, you know, again, I, I want to know what the plan is going forward. What is actually, does there need to be a vaccine? Does there need to be no deaths? Does there need to be no deaths for one year? Does there need to be less than 5%? I want to know what the plan is for my child to get back into school as she prepares for college next year. It is impossible for my child to learn AP statistics online, teaching herself, and that is essentially what she's doing is teaching herself as she prepares to go for school. Um, and that's all I have to say. Thank you, Ms. Ward. Okay, Mr. Vance, can we ask somebody from online, please? We can have them state their name and their address before they begin to talk. That would be great. Mr. Vance, could you just give me a thumbs up if you're working on getting somebody on, please? Thank you. Hello. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Samantha Hubble, 9121 Dogue Run Lane. Um, uh, first, I want to thank my teacher. She's doing a really good job with my son. Um, but I'm at the point where I told you that I wanted my kid back in school. Um, I want to know what you are doing right now to meet your October 19th deadline to get my child back in school two days a week. Because ch my child needs to be in school. He's learned to read from his teacher in person. Uh, my teacher for my child will not get hacked. Um, there will be no connectivity issues. Uh, there will be no 
fellow classmates household noise in the background um and i'm not a teacher i'm not a teacher my son knows i'm not a teacher i'm mom he whines with me to get his work done and he doesn't want to do it and i've asked him will you do this if you're sitting in front of your teacher and he says no i wouldn't do it if i were in front of my teacher um so i want to know what you will be doing this week and for the next month to get my child back into school thank you thank you Okay, so we'll move on. All right, so the next on our agenda is changes to the agenda. No changes, Madam Chair. Thank you. All right, next is the consent to the agenda. We have the uh, meeting minutes uh, for July 6, 2020, which was a special meeting via virtual. Need a motion. Need a motion. Make a motion to uh, uh, pass the consent agenda as posted. Second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Consent agenda has been approved. Next uh, item is our discussion items. We have the King George County policy updates for EBAB, IIBEA E, IKG. JFC-R, JHDA, KKA, LBD. Thank you, Madam Chair. Again, these are uh, members of the board. These are just updates provided to you uh, by way of the Virginia School Boards Association and their policy review service. So um, they're here for discussion to give you some time to review them. We'll place them on action uh, for next meeting. Anybody have any questions or comments they want to make about the, the meeting changes or policy updates? Okay. All right, moving on to the next item. We have action items, the VSBA recommended policy waiver resolution. Again, Madam Chair, members of the board, this was a resolution forwarded to you on behalf of Virginia School Board Association. Uh, they recommend you consider adopting this. This allows for um, there to be no conflict between any executive orders, any changes in state statute or regulation from the Virginia School Board uh, with your current policies. It's simply a cover all or a, a resolution that will um, cover any and all um, policies that would be in conflict with recently issued executive orders in particular. I'd like to make a motion to uh, accept the VSBA policy waiver resolution. Second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Chair votes aye. VSBA recommendation policy waiver resolution has been adopted. Next action item is the 2021 calendar adjustment. I'd like to make a motion to approve the 2021 calendar adjustment as posted. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. aye. Chair votes aye. That policy, um, I'm sorry, 2021 calendar adjustment has been approved. Uh, next item is the KGCS policy updates uh, for BFC, DB, DN, EC, and EDC, along with FA. Oh, sorry, yes. FB, GBE, GBEA, and GBLA. Do we have a motion? Make a motion to to accept the King George County Schools policy updates as presented. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. aye. Chair votes aye. Policy updates have been approved. 
Okay, uh, next on the agenda is information items. Do we have any committee reports? No, no committee reports. Hopefully soon we'll be getting back to our committees. Okay, next, the superintendent's report. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Is this on? Can you hear? Okay, appreciate it. Um, I too wanna congratulate and thank um, our teachers, our, our education leaders, and certainly our community and our students. Um, we had an outstanding uh, start those first couple of days. We did hit some mumps in the road as far as some connectivity issues with the hotspots in particular. Um, unfortunately, we, along with other school divisions, suffered a, uh, a ransomware attack. I can say for the record, just in response, we had no lost data of any kind outside of just four workstation machines. There was no personnel, no student information, uh, simply uh, some word files or those types of files of those employees uh, whose four desktop machines then were encrypted by this ransomware attack. So we were very fortunate that we caught the symptoms early, uh, shut things down. But again, there was no encryption of any other machines to include our servers um, as a result of the ransomware attack. So we're, we're pleased with that as far as a horrific, uh, potentially horrific situation. And my appreciation goes out to our staff who worked through the weekend uh, to make sure all of our machines were protected and we were up and running on Tuesday. So um, I thank everybody for your perseverance. I know that it is a very new paradigm in terms of instructional delivery. Uh, we have done our best and will continue to do very, our very best to uh, deliver instruction, to adjust to needs as they emerge. Um, and I'm in touch with principals. We've had discussions in the recent today uh, regarding our online uh, capabilities and, and delivery. Uh, so thank you to everybody for staying with it. The, um, the second topic is that we are approaching the middle of October. So I'll be happy to entertain any thoughts of the board in terms of uh, needs you have of me uh, in terms of data or uh, time or an opportunity to uh, review information with me or staff in, uh, in revisiting that, uh, that placeholder date, that October 19th or 15th uh, placeholder date established early on in terms of a, any transition. That's all I have. I thank you all. Thank you, Dr. Benson. Okay, we go on to a board comment. Uh, Ms. Gonzalez, would you like to start? Sure. Um, thank you. Um, so I would like to, I guess, echo some of Dr. Benson's sentiments and commend the staff on their quick action uh, to mitigating the damage done by the ransomware attack and to all of those who worked over the weekend to keep our lost instructional time to a single day. So I think that's that is a very that is great for us. So thank you to those who helped make that happen. Um, thank you to all the teachers out there who are working tirelessly to make the virtual instruction endeavors go as smoothly as possible. Obviously, I think it would be unrealistic to expect that it would be without some obstacles and challenges. Um, I think that everyone has done a great job. Thank you to families, students um, for your grace and patience as teachers work through it. I know um, I can't imagine being one of them right now. So kudos to everyone out there who's making it happen. Um, and thank you to everyone this evening who came to speak um, to the board. We appreciate your, your input. Um, emails, public comment are all great ways to let us know what you're thinking about, um, how you feel about the safety and the education of your students. So we continue to encourage and welcome feedback from you all. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gonzalez. Ms. Tolliver? Well, Ms. Gonzalez said everything I was going to say much more eloquently than I probably would have said it. So I too appreciate our IT team for their quick resolution of that problem. To all the staff, students, and families, I especially realize that it's a it's a toll um, on everyone, what we're trying to accomplish right now and, and working to be successful with this new platform of learning. I also think, as Ms. Gonzalez said, that we you know ask for patience and grace from staff and students and families as we navigate what we're trying to accomplish and be successful with this challenge we're looking at right now. I too appreciate those who spoke tonight and those who have sent emails and, and calls and um, we can't make good decisions without knowing what the families in our community want. So we really appreciate that input and feedback. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Tolliver. Ms. Hawk? Um, yes. Uh, we, we really do appreciate you being here and you're speaking. It, it takes effort these days to come out of our house, um, much less to go to work at, as a nurse or a health care professional or a food store service individual or, or so many of, of the essential positions of which our teachers are one. 
Um, we, sitting on this, this stage, this platform, uh, recognize the difficulties involved from your side as well as their side. Um, it's truly a, a terrible time to be living through it. And the lesson we can teach our children is patience and resilience. Um, we can also teach them responsibility. Uh, many people ask, what are we doing to get our children back in school? Um, and yes, I have two grandchildren that, that I'm struggling with uh, fourth grade and sixth grade. And believe me, it's been a long time since I've done sixth grade math. Um, I think the best thing that we can ask our community to do is to try to keep our statistics down, to keep our positivity rate down. We need, and Lord knows I know the healthcare community is doing their best. We need to wear our masks. We need to be conscious about where we are in groups. We need for um, our habits to change to reflect the needs of the time. Um, we wear our seat belts. We do so many things to be safe in life. We can do these. Um, the second thing that I appreciate is the need for information. It, it is so um, frightening and frustrating to not be able to plan for your child, to not be able to plan for your own life. And I um, appreciate the need for the teachers to be able to plan for their life and, and their schedules. Um, in light, I, I, I do want to ask Dr. Benson uh, to give us an update uh, on our, our data and uh, the statistics that are necessary for us to uh, return to any kind of a physical presence. Um, I, I think there are some some uh, data that we need to know, and certainly we need to know from the governor's perspective whether we're meeting those that standard. Um, both, I guess, as a county and a region uh, as well. Um, the other thing that perhaps we might do, um, I know we only have one meeting, is that right? No, we have, we have two. We have the 28th and the 12th, is that correct? Um, so perhaps on both of those meeting agendas, we could have uh, an update, um, just a, a point in time for um, <laughs> staff, Dr. Benson, to update us and the community. Um, and that's all I have to say. Thank you, Ms. Hawk. Mr. Collins? I'd like to thank everyone who sent me emails, telephone calls, and spoke with me personally. Um, I'd like to thank the teachers who are doing an outstanding job. I've visited some of the schools and, and seen what you all been doing, doing a great job, um, along with all of our other staffs. Um, I, we had uh, I had an opportunity to attend a, a school board training on 9:10 from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. with the rest of the board members here. Um, that was um, we had, we uh, learned a lot, I believe, as a group. The last thing is I I think that we should open the schools. I mean, um, you know, it's the my constituents and even folks from outside of my um, James Road District, overwhelmingly, by voice, by email, by personal contact, want to go back to school. Um, I, I would, I would, I would guess if you surveyed the county um, folks that most of them would want to go back to school. I, I've heard very few that do not want to go back to school. You know, the data, the data is out there. And the data speaks for itself. Um, we had uh, the one presenter this today, I think made it pretty clear of what the data says. Now, 
when we open reopen on the 15th or 19th, I, I would like to see the, the plan, the, mainly the cleaning plan is what worries me the, the most. And what I think that's the key part of keeping people safe is, our, is how we're going to keep everybody safe. So with that, um, you know, we have a lot of young people who come up to me and said, hey, I want to go back to school. I'm missing wrestling. I'm missing this. I'm missing that. Um, this is my senior year. I'm um, on and on. This is my sixth grade year. Whatever year they want to, they want to go back to school. So, and the parents want them to go back to school. So that's the end of my comments. Let's put them back to school. And I like to have, I like to think if October is our open date and September 28th is our um, next meeting, I, I would think they would be prudent to have a meeting um, before that time. Thank you, that's the end of my comments. Thank you, Mr. Collins. Okay, well, I, I obviously concur with everything that everyone says. I mean, I think that the staff is doing a great job. I think that, you know, we got over our hurdles and our little bumps um, quite well. I, I know that there are still some frustrations. Um, and, and I, too, agree with Mr. Collins in that uh, I'm hearing a lot of we got to get back to school. Um, you know, one of the things is I, I don't know that a lot of people realize is that, you know, we rely heavily on um, the, the Virginia Department of Education and the governor uh, for their guidelines and their guidance on, um, you know, how to return back to school and, and, and how that's going to look and um, what is working elsewhere. Um, for many of the schools, they're only back in a week. Uh, so, you know, so far, so good. We're all doing well. Um, I think, you know, as in the next few weeks, we're going to see a little bit more statistics coming out that will help us to, to base our decision. And um, I agree with Mr. Collins that, you know, maybe we can have a, a work session or a town hall meeting or something once Dr. Benson and your his staff is available um, or ready and has some guidance from BDOE and um, the governor as, as how is what will um, October 19th look like. Um, and hopefully it will be uh, some type of minimum, at least a hybrid where we can get back and then how that, that looks, um, how other schools have actually done it and what's working well, I think we can learn off of that. Um, just, uh, I think that our, um, our training we did on Friday was enlightening. It was a little contentious at times. Uh, I think that I was um, probably at the brunt of that. I apologize for, for that. But I um, think that it it's, uh, kind of brings us together a little bit and realize that we all have um, a common goal, and that's to uh, serve our community in the best interests of our children, um, our, our teachers, and our parents. Um, so that, that's it for comments for me. I'd like to make a motion to go into closed session pursuant to state code section 2.2-3711. Point A, point one, for the purpose of discussing, considering of prospective candidates for employment, assignment, resignations of the employees of the school board. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Chair votes aye. We are now in closed session.
matters lawfully exempted from open meeting requirements under this chapter and only such public business matters as were identified in the motion by which the closed meeting was convened were heard, discussed, or considered in the meeting by the public body. Second, Second and certify. certify. Second and certify. Third and certify. Certify. Motion carries. We are now in back into open session. Do I have an action resulting from the closed meeting? I move that we approve personnel as presented. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, chair votes aye. Personnel has been um, approved as presented. Do I have a motion for adjournment? Motion to adjourn. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. aye. Chair votes aye. aye. Meeting is now adjourned. I usually just say salute. <laughs> I forgot my mind.